From great stories to tales of intrigue, we present WCRS Radio Stage. Please join us for this exercise of the imagination with radio drama. Today, a story by Michael Giorgio. That sound tells us there's only 15 seconds till curtain time. So get comfortable in your chair as we go to Studio X and WCRS Radio Stage presents the story, A Choice of Victims. afternoon, Frontier Bank. Our drive through is open on Saturdays from 8 until 2. Thank you for calling. Good night. Where is he? We should have closed two minutes ago. Looking at your watch won't get him here any faster, Janet. I know, Betty. I just expect that Mr. Barton's going to walk in one of these nights when I'm keeping the bank open until Steve gets off work. Barton's not coming here on a Friday night. Don't worry about it. That's easy for you to say. No more management career if he catches me. You're lucky to be retiring next week. Yeah, lucky. Anything wrong, Betty? It's Bob. He wants to go traveling and doesn't understand why I want to spend some time just relaxing. Well, he's been retired for two years. He's probably itching to go. You'll be that way soon yourself. Don't bet on it. I don't want to do anything but play with my grandchildren and relax. You answer that. I'll go check on Lauren and Dennis. Good evening. Frontier Bank. No, sir, I'm sorry. The bank is closed. Anyway, we're going to one of them bars tonight. There's a good band at both. We might decide to bar hop. Is that all you do on weekends, Lauren? Hit the bars with the guy of the week? Well, just because you're Mr. Happily Married Man doesn't mean the rest of us can't have fun. Are you two ready to close up? Been ready. Are we ever getting out of here? My drawer is already balanced. Then why don't you go ahead and get ready to go? I'll be locking up in just a second anyway, just as soon as Steve gets here. Good. Thanks. I'm going in back. Dennis, how are you doing? I've been trying to get over here all afternoon to ask you, but Lauren was always here, and, well, I didn't want to talk to you in front of her. Eh, I'll live. If you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> Dennis, you have the greatest attitude. If I were going in for surgery like yours, I couldn't joke about it. I have to joke or else I'll go nuts. I know I may not wake up when it's over or that it may be useless anyway, but I have to go through with it for Lynn and the boys. Like I said, I admire your bravery. I'm not brave. I'm just hoping to have a little extra time with my family. When I'm gone, I'm, I don't want to be forgotten. You won't be forgotten. You're going to be just fine. Don't start thinking like that. You're going to pull through with flying colors. I have to prepare them for that possibility, just in case. So, what are you and Steve going to do this weekend, huh? Um, we're going to the county fair. The fair? <laughs> Excuse me, Janet, but uh, you don't seem like the county fair type. Truthfully, I'm not. But we go every year just for the Midway Games. We have our annual fast draw competition at the shooting gallery. Loser buys dinner of the winner's choice. <laughs> Who usually wins? Well, when we were dating, he did. Now I usually do. <laughs> you women. Who, who says you're the weaker sex? <laughs> well, here comes Steve now behind those two other guys. Great. More customers. Dennis, you'll have to do them. My drawers counted out. Uh, good evening, sir. May I help you? You sure can, pal. I'm here to make a withdrawal. Uh, certainly, sir. May I have your slip? I don't need no slip. This gun says you'll do it without one. <coughs> Shut up, sweet cakes. This isn't going to take long, and ain't nobody going to get hurt. My partner over by the door has got a gun, too. 
So don't do nothing stupid. Of course not. Dennis, give him the money. Now that's being smart. Dennis, give me the money. Hey, what are you doing? Get away from there. Oh, no, you don't. You two, over here. Al, we got trouble big time. What's the problem? This old bat, she hit the alarm button. I saw her do it. This guy got in the way before I could stop her. I'm sorry, Janet. I tried not to make it obvious. Janet, are you okay? Steve, we're fine. Dennis is going to give these gentlemen the money they want, and then they are going to go away. That's right, lady. You're very smart. Now you, get moving. Y y yes, sir. Get moving, buddy. I'm going as fast as I can. Al! Al, the police are coming. What are we going to do, Al? They're going to get us. What are we going to do? Calm down. We got the guns. We got these nice people. Police ain't going to do nothing. Lady, what's behind that door over there? That's our break room. Good. The rest of you go in there. This guy's going to get the rest of the money. Then we're out of here. You heard him. Everybody, move. They're all in there. Good. You watch the door. I'll keep an eye on our friend here. Make sure he don't try no tricks. Answer the phone. Uh, okay. And try to sound normal. Ain't nothing happening here. Frontier Bank, may I help you? Uh, yes? Uh, no. What's going on? It's the police about the alarm. Give me that phone! Yeah? You fool, put that phone down! That's right. Five hostages, too. Idiot. We're gonna kill one of them in three hours unless you let us out of here with it. nobody bothering us. We're serious, pal. <laughs> Almost three hours. What are they doing out there? Well, before they shoved me in here, the police showed up outside. I guess everybody's just waiting for something to happen. What's going to happen is that one of us is going to die. Don't the police know that? Lauren, calm down. They aren't going to kill us. They're bank robbers. They don't want to be up for murder. That's right, Lauren. They just want to get out of here with the money. No one's going to be hurt. I've got some bad news for you folks. Police ain't taking us serious. We're going to have to do something to get their attention. Now, who's it going to be? You. Not me. Please, God, not me. Don't worry, sweetcakes. I ain't going to shoot you. Uh, who then? Well, I'll tell you. I don't know. I like all of you folks. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. You five are going to choose. What? You heard me. You five are going to pick one of you to die. What's the matter? Aren't you man enough to do it yourself? Buddy, don't get me mad, or it's going to be you and somebody else. you got ten minutes. Work it out. This is great. They don't want to hurt us. They aren't going to kill us. Now what do we do? Oh, we, we could try to jump that guy when he comes back in. We, we might be able to get his gun away from him. Dennis, that's crazy. That guy's psychotic. One or more of us could get hurt or killed trying to do something like that. Don't forget, the other guy's got a gun, too, and, and we don't know where in the building he is. It should be you that dies anyway. Lauren! Well, it should be, Steve. If it wasn't for him, we would have been locked up and on our way out of here instead of in this mess. Why? So you could go find yet another man to sleep with? I can't believe you would think something like that. Honey, she's right. It's my fault. If I had been here when I said I was going to be, the door would have been locked. I'm going to tell them we picked me. Steve, I can't let you do that. If anyone should die, it should be me. It was my decision to keep the door open. Yeah, you're in charge. It should be you. Janet, there's no way I'm going to stand by and let those maniacs kill you. It's going to be me, and that's final. It's not going to be you on your say-so alone. We all have a stake in this. Fine by me if Steve wants to die. Lauren, I don't want my husband to die. Especially for the likes of you. We have to come up with some fair way to decide who's, who it's going to be. I vote for Steve. He wants to die anyway. This isn't a popularity contest. Well, we have to decide on something that's fair. Why is everybody looking at me? I don't want to die. No one's looking at you, Betty. Yes, you are. You all are. And I know what you're thinking. Betty's old. Betty's going to retire. Heck. Betty's going to die soon anyway. Betty, no one... I know I'm everybody's grandmother around here. The old lady who remembers birthdays, worries about people's health, tries to like everybody. 
but I'm not that brave. I don't want to die. I'm at a point in my life where I get to start enjoying, and that's what I'm going to do. You're too old to enjoy life. Maybe it should be you. Lauren, you're a prize, you are. You hook up with every man that comes along, drink like prohibitions coming back any day, and have no purpose in life other than partying. You're the one who wouldn't be missed. Who'd miss you? There's thousands of them just like you out there, interchangeable bimbos who care about no one but themselves. You don't know me. Yes, I do. I've seen lots of girls and guys like you in my life. You don't know the meaning of enjoying life. I don't know how to live life. Huh? I'm not going to be retiring from the same job I started at 40 years ago, like you are. I've got ideas, and I'm starting to make plans. I might just be a teller right now, but I'm going to do greater things. Greater things? Like what? This arguing isn't going to accomplish anything. Oh, here it comes. The college graduate's going to prove how smart he is and come up with a solution. I don't, I don't have a solution. Of course you don't. If you had any real brains, you'd be using that degree of yours instead of working as a teller. Supporting your family instead of living off your wife. I do support my family. I do everything I can. That sure isn't much. Besides, you're going to die anyway. Who says I'm going to die? You. All day long. Talking about this surgery. If you're going to die, you might just as well do it and get it over with. Let the rest of us live and leave your family a nice, fat insurance policy. Lauren, I've been wanting to tell you something for a long time, and I'm going to do it now. Don't worry. I'll, I'll use small words so you'll understand. Oh, this ought to be good. Mr. Uptight himself telling me how to live my life. Like he didn't grab the only woman in the world who would look at him twice. Lauren, you are probably the worst example of humanity I've ever met. You're worse than those two out there. You're nothing but a cheap little tramp who's going to make a name for herself by sleeping with important people, and not by being one herself. Just ask Mr. Barton about that. That's enough. Personal attacks aren't going to get us anywhere. We can't base this on lifestyle or on who deserves it most. Because none of us deserve this. It's bad timing. It's your fault. It's bad timing. Fate. That's it. What's it? Fate. We'll let fate decide it. How do we do that? We'll draw straws. Person with the smallest straw loses. That would be you, Dennis. We can use the coffee stirrers. Hey, I've got five. I'm going to break one. Whoever draws the broken straw is... is it. Everyone agreed? <laughs> That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who draws first? Does it really matter? Well, if it doesn't matter, I'll go first. Long straw! It's not going to be me! Here, Janet, you go next. Okay, here goes. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I saw that. Saw what? Y you wiggled that straw on the end. Y you were trying to tell Janet which one to choose. You're imagining things. Steve, I saw you do it. No, I... Yes, you did, Steve. Janet, I... Honey, I appreciate what you tried to do for me. But I'm in this situation the same as everybody else, and I can take my chances like everybody else. I can't let this happen to you. It shouldn't be happening to any of us, but it is. So what do we do now? We draw again. Only this time somebody else holds the straws. I'm not drawing again. I already won. No one is drawing again. But we have to do something. What do we do? Flip a coin? Sure, we'll find a five-sided coin just for you. No, we'll sit here and wait. If they want to kill somebody, they can decide who it's going to be. I'm not going to let them dump this kind of guilt on us, making us choose who dies. So we just sit and wait? That's what I think we should do. If we don't make a decision, they might get mad and kill more than one of us. Then what? I don't know, but I'm not choosing. Look what it's already done to us. Let them decide. So what's it going to be? Do we get out of here or do we kill somebody? You know we'll do it. It ain't going to be the first time. We ain't got nothing to lose. Go to hell, buddy. You won't be talking so big when we start throwing bodies out of here. Stupid cops. They don't think we're going to do it. Hey, let's go get one of them now and do it, huh, Al? The cops ain't so smart. We got nerve. We'll show them. I didn't want to have to kill nobody. We have to, Al. We ain't got no choice. We're going to die here if we don't show them we mean it. 
Jimmy, my man, you're right. I'm sick of waiting. Open that door and let's get one of them out here. You gonna make them juice? <laughs> Why not? What difference does it make to us which one of them dies? <laughs> You folks made a decision yet? We're not making the decision. You want to kill one of us? You're going to have to choose who. I told you. I don't care, so I ain't choosing. I'll kill all of you and keep telling the cops you're all alive. Now, who's it going to be? We decided it's going to we be... We have a way to decide, but we need your help. <laughs> My help? That's right. We decided the only fair way was to play Russian roulette. We did? Yes, we did. Oh, we all agreed. And what do you need from me? Your gun and one bullet. <clears> Ow, <throat> it's a trick. She's just trying to get the gun from you. It's no trick. The gun's only going to have one bullet in it, and we won't know which chamber it's in. You'll still have your gun on us. This is stupid. She's up to something. I'm not up to anything. We're all friends. We couldn't choose one of us to die. So we decided to let fate choose for us. Al, don't do it. I don't think so, lady. Come up with something else. There's another advantage. For you, that is. What's this big advantage? If we pull the trigger ourselves, whoever gets the bullet will have committed suicide. You won't be charged with murder. Suicide, huh? Al, I still think it's some kind of trick. It's no trick. You get your body to prove to the cops you're serious. And we don't have to choose who dies. Everybody wins. <laughs> Everybody except for the sucker that dies. We're all willing to take that chance. That's right. If it has to be one of us, may as well let luck decide it. What the hell? Why not? Ow, this is crazy. The lady's right. If one of them pulls the trigger, we don't get murder against us. It's a good idea. For us. You can't give them a gun. You hold your gun on them, and they can't pull any tricks. I don't. Jimmy, just do it. Let me get the bullets out of this gun. Here you go, lady. The gun. We're going to need one of those bullets. Sure, here you go. I'll just put it in the chamber. Now, who's first? Jimmy, who's first? Yeah. Let sweet cakes go first. You heard him, lady. Give Sweet Cakes a gun. Jimmy, keep your eyes open for any tricks. Here you go, Lauren. What do I do? Sweet Cakes, it's a little game is all. You put the gun to the side of your head and pull the trigger. If the gun goes bang, you lose and all your friends here win. <laughs> I can't do this. Either you do it or Jimmy does it. You pick. Oh, God. Here goes. Thank you. God, thank you. Looks like you win this time, Sweet Cakes. Okay, Lady Manager, you next. Gladly. Give me the gun. Oh, Al, let her go last. It was her big idea. Let her watch one of her friends die. I can't watch everyone else. Yeah, you're going to sweat it out. You, you're next. Me? Yeah, you. Get over here. Oh, I can't believe this. Tell you the same thing I told Sweet Cakes. Either you do it and take your chances, or Jimmy does it and you get no chances. Which is it going to be? Give me the gun. Tell my family I love them. No, oh, that's sweet. Now put the gun up there and pull the trigger. Congratulations, Dennis. Uh, thanks. God, my hands are shaking. Well now, old lady, that's nice. Congratulating the guy when you still have to go. Why don't you go next? See if you can do so good. Me? Yeah, you. Your turn now. I hope you do good, lady. I want the manager lady to get the bullet. I don't trust her. I don't like you much, either. Oh, now, you've ruined my day. Jimmy, cut it out. <laughs> I was just having a little fun. Can we please get this over with? See what you did, Jimmy? You got the old lady all upset. Oh, I'm sorry, lady. Now pick up the gun, put it to your head. That's right. Now pull the trigger. I can't. I can't. Do it. No. Here, give me the gun. Here. Get over here. Move. D don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you, lady. If you can't pull the trigger, I'm going to pull it for you. No. Let go of me. Let her go. What kind of animal are you? You best stay right there, pal. I, I, I still got this gun. <laughs> Buddy, this little game wasn't my idea. 
was you guys that thunk it up. And she's going to go through with it whether she likes it or not. No! Oh. Now shut up, lady, and let's get this done. Why, you... Don't move, buddy, or it's going to be game over for you. Better listen to him. Lady, you ready? Oh. Guess that was a yes. You know what, lady? I hope you don't get the bullet. I don't want your gray hair and brains all over me. Sadistic pig. Shut up, tough guy. Your turn's next. Okay, lady, here we go. A one, a two, a three. Guess you win, lady. All that fussing for nothing. Go sit down. You're shaking so hard, you're going to die of a heart attack. <laughs> your turn, tough guy. Come on, come on. Let's see how brave you really are. Give me the gun. Hang on a second, buddy. Jimmy, keep a real close eye on him. He makes any kind of move to do anything besides what he's supposed to do, shoot him. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay, here we go, pal. Here's the gun. Do it. Janet, I love you. Do it! Steve, thank goodness. Let me do it again. I'll, I'll take her turn. Shut up, pal. Your turn's done. You don't get to play no more. You're lost! <laughs> Okay, lady, your turn. Looks like you're going to be the big loser in your own game. Just, just give me the gun. Janet! This was my idea, and I've got to go through with it. Here you go. I love you, Steve. Here goes. <laughs> the bullet's in the sixth chamber. Now we got to start all over. No, we don't. Get him! I've got the gun now. Stand up, buddy. Thank God this nightmare's over. Shoot him, Steve, like he was going to shoot us. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. No, I shoot him and we all sink to his pathetic level. Hey, buddy, you, tough guy. Yeah. You know what you two forgot? What? In Russian roulette, you're supposed to spin the cylinder of the gun. You think you're smart, but you let me load the gun. I knew where the bullet was. I knew it wasn't going to be one of us that was going to get shot. Why didn't you say something? I was scared out of my mind. I made a fool out of myself for nothing. There wasn't time. I didn't get the idea until he came back to find out our choice. Hello? Yes, a gunshot. One of the robbers is dead. We're holding the other one for you. We're all just fine. Janet, are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. He wanted us... To make a choice, I made it. I guess we all just go home now? That's where I'm heading. Home. I think I'll skip going to the bars tonight. I better get home to, to Lynn and, and the boys. I'm sure they're worried by now. Before everybody goes, I just want to apologize for anything I may have said or done before. I, I didn't mean anything. Of course not, Betty. We all said things under the strain. Everything's best just forgotten. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you. I'm going to go home, too. I guess Bob and I are going to make some travel plans. I guess we all have plans to make. Well, I suppose we do. Well, I, for one, owe this wonderful woman a dinner. A dinner? For what? Well, you did win this year's fast draw, didn't you? I suppose I did. I just need to finish up so everything can get back to normal around here. If it can ever be, if it can ever be normal around here again. Today's program featured Margot Parker as Janet, Mike Cuppet as Al, D. 
David Crawford as Jimmy, Barb Bruno as Lauren, Nora Staldrer as Betty, Matt Anthony as Dennis, and David Binkley as Steve. A Choice of Victims was written by Michael Giorgio. Original music was written and performed by David Crawford and Tom Holman. WCRS Radio Stage was produced in Akron, Ohio by David Binkley and David Crawford. I'm Joe Cali asking you to join us the next time we open the curtain on WCRS Radio Stage. <laughs>